What's going on guys? Gast here giving you another Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valencia guide. Today I'm going to show you the easiest and quickest way to get Desai's Draco Shield. Despite what some may think, you really don't need to grind that much at all to get the shield. It's actually just a matter of the right strategy, as well as picking the right units for the job. First of all, let's just talk about Desai for a second. It is pretty much impossible for any of your units to deal any more than 1 damage per hit on Desai, as the Draco Shield will boost his defense and resistance by 13, giving him a total of 33 defense and 20 resistance. That said, his attack speed is effectively 0, which means all of your units will be able to double him. So at the very least, you'll be able to do 2 damage if you hit both times. The key is to constantly bombard to say with as many units as you can, as the Draco Shield will be recovering 5 health per turn. The good news is, is that you'll barely need to do any extra grinding. Or at the very least, no grinding to tier 3 is required to get the shield. That said, there is definitely some prep work involved in this plan. So, after reaching the first shrine, it's important that Faye is promoted to a cleric, as physic and general healing will be extremely helpful in Desai's map. Having at least one mercenary to share the lightning sword with Ulm will be great, as mercenaries will get very, very easy XP and will likely be able to promote into a Myrmidon just in time before Desai's map. A mage with Excalibur makes this much easier too. You can either make Tobin or Cliff into mages. Tobin's support with Grey will increase his critical hit chance, and combined with the Excalibur will make for a pretty reliable critical hit rate. Additionally, Cliff's 10 base luck will also contribute to Excalibur's crit chance on his end. Put these two together, and the likelihood that you'll be dealing more than 2 damage per round with either of these two will increase, ultimately making it quicker to defeat Desai. That being said, I went with Cavalier Cliff because his defense and mobility proved beneficial in baiting out Slade. And honestly, baiting out Slade is the most intricate and difficult part of the strategy, more so than actually taking out Desai. So, you progress as you normally would in Act 1. Just make sure Silk has Warp, Faye has Physic, and at least one Excalibur spell is in your arsenal. Your Mercenary should also be promoted into a Myrmidon by this point. These level requirements may sound like they require grinding, but they should be achieved naturally if you've been spreading EXP fairly throughout the party. If you don't have Faye as a Cleric with Physic, then I strongly suggest you equip your entire party with provisions. Now with your team prepped to face to say, it's time to strategize. Have your Claire, your Mercenary, Mage, and Healers on the right side and focus all of your movement rightward. Move Claire and Warper to as close to the top right door as possible. In the next turn, warp your Lightning Sword equipped mercenary to the right fortress here. Meanwhile, continue to move your units to the right and over the bridge, while pushing Claire to the far right door. With your mercenaries clogging this opening, there's no way for this group of enemies to escape to the supplies. In the next turn, warp your cavalier next to your mercenary and have them both take down the rest of the enemies on the fort. Make sure this cavalier has a leather shield equipped as well. While your cavalier and mercenary are killing these two units, make sure they're not in the range of the other cavaliers up top here. Lure out and kill the two archers along the wall here with your other units. Claire needs to open the top right door. Meanwhile, all of your units on the ground level need to stay as far from the middle area as they can. This is vital to get right. Place your mercenary one tile into the range of the cavaliers, with your own cavalier one tile behind. Meanwhile, start to bring Claire back to the party. And again, be sure to keep your units far from the middle area for now. The next turn will have Slade and a handful of his men target your mercenary. Your mercenary will be able to soften up whoever fights him.
On ally phase, place your cavalier in his place and move your mercenary along the wall to poke at another cav. Once again, keep your ground units away from the middle still. The importance of keeping your units far from this area is that it keeps Slade's AI from prioritizing units it deems it possible to attack sooner. If you're too close, Slade will abandon his position at your mercenary and cav pair in favor of whoever is in this area. At this point, Slade is much closer to your mercenary and cavalier pair than to your other units around the bottom middle. So now you can begin to bring those units up and along the left wall as you can see here. Just be mindful of Slade's range. Once Slade's cavaliers are defeated and he's able to attack either your mercenary or cavalier, move both units into the fortress, but keep your mercenary in his range. On enemy phase, he'll attack your mercenary, and the lightning sword will deal enough damage to change his AI from attacking your units to retreating for supplies. At this point, Slade should be sufficiently damaged to the point where his AI will prioritize getting healed. Now, bring your cavalier and mercenary to the entryway and clog it off to block Slade's escape. With this area cut off, make sure that Slade still has an open area to the supplies through the door that Claire opened. If done successfully, his AI will take the longest possible route back to the supplies, buying you plenty of time to bait out Desay. Doing this also enables you to manipulate Slade's path to the supplies. If you block off the long way for Slade to return, he'll turn around and try breaking through your cavalier or mercenary, but if he's far enough away, you can make him go back and forth and completely stall him. With these units, start picking off archers and anyone else in the area with Alm, your mage, or anyone else capable. Your Excalibur mage should be able to creep along the left and in fact solo the area so long as Faye is physicking him. As you can see here, I brought my mercenary out to help contribute to killing the rest of Desai's soldiers, while my cavalier merely blocks and unblocks Slade's closest escape to the supplies, consequently manipulating his AI so he alternates between trying to take the long route and taking the short route. Once you've finished clearing out most of Desai's men, now you can bait out Desai himself by using Alm or Lucas, or anyone for that matter. Bait him out just a bit further for one more turn so you're in around the middle area. Now, unblock Slade's way into the supplies. Just be careful and don't leave anyone who can die in his range on his way there, because he will prioritize killing your units over getting healed. Once he gets to the supplies though, get a unit to clog his way out of there, consequently trapping him in. Make sure the unit clogging him will both survive his hits and not be able to damage Slade in any significant way, as you need him alive for as long as the say is. This is actually the hardest and most elaborate part, and with this part over, all you need to do now is just constantly use Excalibur, the Lightning Sword, any other ranged weapon you have, just to chip away at Desai's health. If you choose to fight him in melee range, just make sure you have healers available, and in case you get critical hitted, use the turn wheel. It will take a while, but with some lucky critical hits and connections, Desai will eventually go down. Thank you. 
Well folks, thanks for watching this guide on how to get Desay's Draco Shield in the end of Act 1. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new, and if you did, please leave a like and comment. If you haven't subscribed yet, I encourage you to do so for more Fire Emblem Echoes guides and content. With that said, thanks for your time and I'll catch you guys next time. Deuces.